Describe how the graph of the function g of x equals negative 5 times the square root of x. Let me write this bigger on here. So we move that. g of x equals, and this is number one, g of x equals negative five times the square root of x. And they want us to explain what's happening. Well, so before they do it, I want to tell you that Notice that these are out in front of the function. This is the function. The negative sign and the five are out in front, physically in front. So let me let me erase this and move it over. This is a reflection across the x-axis. It's like reading another language. You learn how to read it. And the five is a vertical stretch. So now and I'm going to try to make this bigger. OK, describe how the graph of the function g of x equals negative 5 times the square root of x can be obtained from the basic graph, then graph the function. OK, start with the graph. They tell you what the basic graph is. Start with the graph of f of x equals the square root of x. Then, hmm, by multiplying each hmm coordinate by hmm. Well, that tells you a lot, doesn't it? Okay, well, let's start and see what our choices are. Okay, shrinking and stretching vertically and horizontally. By multiplying each X or Y coordinate by hmm. Well, it just so happens in this problem that the only multiplying of coordinates is going to be done by the five, not by the minus, by the five. So that could only be a vertical stretch. So we're going to stretch it vertically by multiplying each y-coordinate by, excuse me, five. Finally, reflect it across the, a minus out in front of the function part. Again, it's vertical. You're just going upside down. Reflect it across the X axis, which makes it go upside down. Now I'm going to check the answer. Excellent. Now we have to choose a graph. So I've got the square root graph that looks like this. I'm well, let me start here. The square root graph, y equals the square root of x. That 5 is going to stretch it vertically. And then the minus sign is going to flip this upside down. So.
that many to choose from? Well, notice that this one and this one and this one are the only ones that get turned upside down. Um, this is very clearly stretched. I'm going to go with A. OK. Now, describe how the given function can be obtained from one of the basic graphs. OK, then graph the function. Now notice this, how do you tell what the basic graph is if they don't tell you? Look at the letter X, and then look at the exponent. Or if it's absolute value bars, or a square root sign, or a cube root, you wanna get to where you can um, classify these things. Well, here you've got an x squared. So the basic function is going to be x squared. Now notice that this minus four is in parentheses with the x. It's trapped with the x. Therefore, it's a horizontal shift. It'll be horizontal something. So it's horizontal shift because it's being subtracted from the X. Now what I have to do is remember that the only sure way to know which, unless you memorize it, to know which way this is moving is to take the X minus four, set it equal to zero and solve for X. x equals positive 4 or plus 4. This shift is 4 units to the right. So, my basic graph is x squared, and I'm going 4 units to the right. Now I just have to find that. Shift the graph four units to the right. OK, oh, cool. So now I just have to type. X. X. Squared. And check my answer. Okay, now we're going to graph this. Oh, that is so small. All right, well, let's just deal with it. Um, this, is, this is x squared, it's not square root, it's x squared, and it's gonna be a parabola like this. And notice that if you hover if you hover your mouse over that icon, it says X squared tool. Now click the graph to plot your coordinates. OK. Well, I wasn't expecting that because they're not mo most of them aren't like that. All right, all right, all right to plot your C. Wonder if I can stretch this. No. Nope. OK, all right. Well, all right. What's the vertex going to be? It's going to be four zero. How do we know that? Because we've analyzed quadratic functions before. All right, so the uh, vertex <clears throat> is at four x minus h squared plus k, okay, so at four. At x equals four and y equals zero because k is zero. So I'm gonna click there. I could have clicked anywhere. 
All right, so let's start over. Now, graph. I couldn't finish reading this, but what it probably says is click. All right, choose one of these, then click anywhere on the graph. Click doesn't matter. Because this is what matters. This will get your graph to be correct. You have vertical stretch, shrink, horizontal stretch, shrink, vertical shift, horizontal shift, reflect over the X axis, reflect over the Y axis. We have only one transformation here and that is a horizontal shift. Four units to the right. So here's the horizontal shift. I'm going to take this mover thing and go four units to the right. I'm going to save the graph, check the answer, and get told I'm correct. OK, we'll do one more and then move on. Describe how the graph of this function, g of x equals negative 1 fourth times the square root of x can be obtained from the basic graph. And in this problem, they tell you what the basic graph is. It's kind of nice. And then, well, we have a vertical shrink and a vertical reflection. OK, so a vertical shrink, we're going to shrink it vertically by multiplying each y-coordinate. Vertical is always y by one-fourth. Finally, reflect it across the x-axis, in other words, vertically. We're going to make it go upside down. And then here we are again. No, it's not a reflection across the y-axis. No, not a reflection across the wall. This is the only one that's got it reflected the right way. So I'm going to choose D. See, this is how you're going to do all of it. If you feel very uncomfortable with absolute values, doesn't matter. They tell you what the basic graph is. And then all you have to do is describe the transformations. This is a vertical shrink. And this is a vertical shift down four units. So yeah, actually, if you keep your notes by you, you can go through this pretty quickly. Here you've got a vertical shrink by a factor of one fourth, and then you're going to move up six units, vertical shift up. So it's just a matter of getting used to what these are. Let's see if there's anything else even more horrible. Here are three transformations. You've got a vertical reflection, a reflection across the x-axis. You've got a vertical shrink, and you have a horizontal shift to the right for units. So the goal here is to just be able to read these. Think of it as learning to read another language. Here you've got a reflection across the x-axis. 
um, a horizontal shift to the right three units and then a vertical shift up two units. So yeah, in your notes, you've got everything you need. Now, why don't we take a 10 minute break, be back at five minutes after 10, and we are going to talk about function behavior. Woo! Bye bye for a few minutes, 10 minutes. Be back at five minutes after 10. <laughs> 